Welcome back everybody to linuxacademy.com. My name is Jerry and in today's course we continue with Ansible Quick Start. So we've been able to run some arbitrary commands using the Ansible command line and now we've even run a basic playbook against our environment as configured. And again if we do a Ansible all dash dash list hosts this is one way for us to see the hosts that we have configured our, in our environment. And in our case, we're using the default Etsy Ansible host. We have them broken up into three groups, local, CentOS, and Ubuntu, just to make it easy for us to determine what we're running against what. Now, having said that, now we have the concept of gathering facts that we've talked about with our playbook. So very briefly, we talked about when we configured our playbooks that we can turn on or off the ability for Ansible to gather plays. And that's listed specifically here. By default, Ansible will always gather facts about the remote hosts as the first part of running a playbook. However, that behavior could change at any point in the future. So again, where possible, I like to explicitly state in my playbooks what I expect the behavior of Ansible to be when it runs my playbook. In this case, uh, I have gathering facts turned on. But what exactly does gathering facts mean? Well, Ansible needs to determine some way as to whether it can run plays that, are, that it might be asked to on a remote node. And how does it do that? it goes out and gets information about that node. We can explicitly get facts if we just want to get the facts for a particular host or a group of hosts, just the facts, ma'am, pun intended. We can do an Ansible and the host or group that we want to. So in this case, let's just say the CentOS server. We'll use the module called setup. Now what this will do is it will actually perform the gathering of facts that Ansible does by default when it runs any playbook. And you'll see that there's a ton of information that it pulls back. And this is all valid information and pertinent information for Ansible to know because it may need any, any of these items in order to run a play or a task against this particular host. So what if I want to know something in particular? Well, I can filter these results. I mean, by default, of course, I can use grep to grep for, say, for example, the IP, IPv4. So, if, for example, if I just do a grep on IPv4, I'll get all of those values back, but you'll see there's a problem with that. I only get the line that IPv4 exists in. Unfortunately for my grepping is the information that I'm after is actually after the line that IPv4 is. This JSON file is gathering the information and labeling it with something that I might be interested in, but the information that I want is actually within or after the label itself. So that's where we want to run the gathering effect command but instead of doing a grep, we'll pass in a dash A, and we'll indicate that we want to filter the results. And we can filter the results by simply doing a filter equals, and then whatever filter that we want to. We can use wild cards, we can use exact names, but in our case, since we know IPv4 exists, let's just filter on anything, on any section that contains IPv4. So when I say IPv4, then it goes out against my CentOS host, and it says, okay, Ansible all IPv4 addresses is a match. I'll pull that information here for you. Ansible default IPv4 is match, and I'll pull that information here for you. So you get everything that matches the filter that we put in place. Just as we could have instead, we could have said, pull anything that has default in it, and I would have got something similar because default happens to be a match here 
and you'll see where we got something different, whereas before we did not get anything with IPv6, we did actually get an, a, a, the default value for IPv6, which in this case turns out to be nothing. How would I know what to filter for? Well, you can get the facts and you can take a look at them, but it's kind of a pain to get them every time that you want to take a look at what you might want to filter for. So what you can do is if you want, you can create an output file that contains all of the facts for a given host. All we have to do is pass in a additional parameter to the setup module. So let's go ahead and clear the screen here and let's create a local file. So let's do an Ansible and we'll create it against CentOS dash M setup and instead of pulling all the facts and displaying it in my terminal let's do a dash dash tree and let's tell it we want to save it to a fact directory so we'll just say facts now you'll see that it pulled it to the terminal just like it has in the past but i also see this new directory here called facts what's in this facts directory in this facts directory, for the hosts or group of hosts that match the command that I sent to Ansible, in this case I said CentOS, it goes back and pulls the hosts, and all of the facts for that particular host are within that file. So if we do a vim on tcox2 my lab server, we'll see we have all of these facts that are available to us to do a search on. So what you're likely going to use these for is you'll use these as filters for things that you might want. So for example, I may want to know the Ansible domain. So let's get out of here, Ansible underscore domain. Now that I know that's a key fact, we'll come back over here and we'll run Ansible underscore domain. And now I get back my Ansible facts for Ansible underscore domain happens to be mylabserver.com. Now these become things that I can use if I want to from within my playbooks if I pass those values in as variables to a playbook that I may be running for one reason or another. And we're going to go over variables next and how to use variables in our playbooks as well as pass variables in at the command line. So these facts are for not only your reference, but Ansible absolutely needs them to be sure that whatever tasks that you're providing to Ansible to run can actually be run against the host that it's trying to run against. It tells it things like IP address. It tells it things like the OS version and type, how much disk is available, et cetera, et cetera. All of those things are very important to Ansible to make a determination on whether the tasks that it's being asked to run will successfully complete on that module. Now, if we were to do an Ansible all, for example, if we say if we change CentOS here, then all it's going to do at this point is let's go back to our command for running the tree. Sorry, rather than just that. We'll do Ansible all minus M setup facts. And now I have another facts directory. And within that, I have all three of my hosts that are defined. And the, the values in them are all going to be different, which is why all the file sizes are different. So you have a place to not only look about what you might need to filter from an Ansible perspective, if you're doing a filter on the command module, the setup module for Ansible to use, as a variable that you're gonna pass into your playbook or just a variable that you need to know, but it'll also give you all of these values that you can import into a database if you're building a configuration management database for your environment. So for using the setup module and gathering remote facts and what those contain in our Ansible environment, that's all there is to it. My name is Terry for Linux Academy.